up music with Monalee. I am Monalee. Ugh. Yeah. Again. So we leave tomorrow super duper early to go to my parents for a bit. And um, I've been like working in the house and trying to pack because we're going to be there for a while. And I, it's just been crazy. I've been running errands. Here it is. But I'm excited about this video because this was another uh, $5 Patreon drawing. And the winner got to choose uh, which band I do the how they got their name. So thank you, Tim, for choosing The Doors. Um, I'm excited because my brothers introduced me to The Doors when I was in, oh, eighth grade, I believe. I don't even know how they found The Doors. I should ask them. But once I heard his voice, I was like, whoa. And once I saw him perform, I was like, whoa, whoa. And then once I saw him in his leather pants with the big dish belt thing, I was like, ayo. So maybe not in eighth grade. I wasn't like, ayo. Maybe I was. I don't know. But I love the doors. So uh, I, I remember how they got their name, I believe. But I haven't ever like researched it. And when I did, it came back to me. And it's a very short story. So I went ahead and added some lesser known facts maybe that you might not know about the doors and a little bit of history of the doors if you are interested and you should be. If you haven't seen the doors movie with Val Kilmer, you should because it is amazing and he looks like him and it's just like, whoa. Yeah. Okay. So let me go over here to my notes. First, I want to say that my sources for this, because as a librarian, you must cite your sources, uh, the vintage news, thedoors.com, their own website, and then BuzzFeed. I got some stuff from BuzzFeed. Okay, so The Doors were formed in L.A. in 1965 by Jim Morrison and Ray Manzarek. I can never say that guy's name. For some reason, my tongue is just like... Blah, blah, blah. And they actually met at UCLA's film school, and uh, then they ended up meeting again at, on Venice Beach, and they were just sitting together talking, and Jim revealed to Ray some of the songs he had written. And he said them as his poetry because that's, you know, he's a very, very good poet. Again, if you haven't read his poetry, you should. But he sang um, a couple of the songs to him and Ray said he was just like taken aback, like eyes wide. He said he'd never heard rock lyrics like this before on this level. And he was just blown away by it. So Manzarek, I'm going to call him just Ray from now on, probably. Uh, he's an organist. If you don't know that, that's the classic. I mean, that's that iconic sound you hear, first of all, from that decade, but also from the doors. And he had just formed a band called Rick and the Ravens with his brothers Rick and Jim, not to be confused with Jim Morrison. And since they were searching for a vocalist and drummer, uh, Ray actually asked Jim Morrison to join them. So jump, I'm sorry if you hear all this... Um, noise going on in the background, the traffic, I have the windows open, so it's kind of loud. Okay, so drummer John Dinsmore of the Psychedelic Rangers joined the band, and soon after that, they recorded six of Jim Morrison's songs. So they recorded Moonlight Drive, which is the one that he sang and said to Ray on the beach that day. So they did Moonlight Drive, My Eyes Have Seen You, I don't recognize those, hello, oh, hello, I love you, won't you tell me your name? Hello, I love you, let me tell in your game. Uh, go insane, end of the night, and summer's almost gone. Uh, Ray's brothers, Rick and Jim, didn't like the recordings, actually, with Jim Morrison, and decided to leave the band. Oh, man, can you imagine? I bet later on they were like, stupid, stupid decision. <laughs> Ooh, just reminds me of uh, George Strait, I believe it was, and Tim McGraw, actually, when they both tried to make it in Nashville. It's a totally other topic. Um, they were told that they don't have voices for country. And I believe George Strait is the king of country, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so they left the band. They didn't like the recordings. They left. John's friend, guitarist Robbie Krieger, who was previously also a member of the Psychedelic Rangers, then joined the band. They never found a new bass player, and I didn't really think about that until I went back while I was re researching this and watched some clips of them performing, and I was like, oh my god, they don't have a bass player. And if you're wondering, well, what is that bass sound? That, my friend, is Ray's left hand. So he plays organ with the right, bass with the left. Oh, it's so good. So good. And uh, so they just could never. They even auditioned after that a few bass players, but they just never found one that 
could play as good as Ray's left hand. I feel like there's some kind of innuendo somewhere in there, or that's what she said, but it's not coming to me, so I'm gonna keep going. Okay. Jim Morrison is the one that chose the band's name after reading Aldous, I can't pronounce that first name, Huxley's The Doors of Perception, which got its title from a quote in a book written by William Blake, The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. So the quote is, quote, if the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is, infinite. For man has closed himself up till he sees all things through narrow chinks of his cavern. Deep. In 1967, Ray said in an interview, quote, there are things you know about, he was 25 by the way when he said this, and, uh, and things you don't, the known and the unknown, and in between are the doors, that's us. We're saying that you're not only spirit, you're also this very sensuous being. That's not evil. That's a really beautiful thing. Hell appears so much more fascinating and bizarre than heaven. You have to break on through to the other side to become the whole being. Break on through to the other side. Break on through to the other side. Break on through. Break on through. Okay. The neighbor's dog barked at me. It's like, shut up. So the band ended up signing with Elektra Records following a now legendary gig at the Whiskey A Go Go on the Sunset Strip. Look it up. It's legendary. The Doors recorded six studio albums in all, and they performed throughout Europe, including a show in Amsterdam, which is where Morrison, Jim Morrison, then collapsed on stage after a drug binge. And in June 1969, they released The Soft Parade, and next year they released their fifth studio album, Morrison Hotel. In 1971, soon after L.A. Woman, L.A. Woman, L.A. Woman, okay, uh, Morrison moved to Paris to concentrate on his writing. You see where I'm going with this, because as you probably know, he is buried in Paris. Um, on July 3rd, 1971, his body was found in the bathtub in his apartment, and the rock legend apparently died of a drug overdose. And I find this to be crazy how many people die in bathtubs, like Whitney Houston and then her daughter and Jim Morrison and... I think there's some others, too, that draw, die of drug overdoses in the bathtub. Where are my conspiracy theorists? Let me hear it below. Why is that? Okay, so here's some fun, maybe not fun, but interesting, lesser-known facts about The Doors. So The Doors were the first band ever to advertise a new album on a billboard. Jack Holzman chose the Chateau Marmont because it was a favorite nesting place of Jim's. Jim Morrison used the same kind of microphone to record Strange Days as Frank Sinatra used to record several of his own albums. And according to Jack Holzman, Jim was super stoked about that. <laughs> okay, so Break On Through was actually the first real music video. And I know someone out there is going, no, his video killed the radio start. No, that was the first video played on MTV. This, Break On Through, Break on through to the... Okay, I already sang that. It was the first real music video. You know the day destroys the night. Electra Records filmed it to save the doors from the exhaustion of an expensive promo tour. Electra founder Jack Holzman, who I've mentioned a lot so far, would later co-create pop clips for Nickelodeon, which then evolved into, you guessed it, MTV. I want my MTV. Morrison famously spent most of his adult life in a relationship with Pamela Corson, who served as his muse and his partner. And I think she is adorbs. And uh, I, yeah, I think she's very pretty. Their relationship was eventually considered a common law marriage by the state of California, even though common law marriage wasn't recognized in California. That's funny. But Corson is buried as Pamela Susan Morrison. Um, and that's kind of funny because if you ever read anything about The Doors, he slept with lots of people, including um, Jefferson Airplane singer Grace Slick, who calls him her strawberry F-word. And I believe he slept with Janis Joplin, and he also slept with a number of other people. But apparently, Pamela knew about all this and was just kind of like, free love, and uh, didn't really mind, I guess. I don't know, a woman that wouldn't mind. Maybe she was doing her own thing. Who knows? Maybe she was getting with, like, who was hot in the 60s? 
Robert Plant, was he around in the 60s or was he too late for that? Anyway, predictably, drugs have their negative side effects. And when the recording of The End was finished, this is the end, my only friend, the end. Morrison went back to the studio after everyone had left. And according to those who were witness to at least part of this incident, though they do tell slightly different stories about it, they were probably all kind of high, Morrison's drug riddled brain was convinced that the studio was on fire and he proceeded to empty an entire fire fire extinguisher in the studio space the company behind the doors was quick to pay for the damages which uh doors guitarist robbie krieger says marked a turning point in jim morrison's life as a rock star he said quote i thought jim felt well i got away with that i can get away with anything maybe and last but not least on my uh, little uh, unknown facts here is that Jim Morrison's leather pants had no fly. And there you have it. That's how the Doors got their name. Music with Modeling. Cheers.